Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 11, Conducting a Simulation to Estimate the Probability of Okay, here we go. Example one, simulation. In the last lesson, we used coins, number cubes, and cards to carry out simulations. Another option is putting identical pieces of paper or colored discs into a container, mixing them thoroughly, and choosing them. For example, if a basketball player typically makes five out of eight foul shots, then a colored disc could be used to simulate a foul shot. A green disc could represent a made shot, and a red disc represent a miss. You could put five green and three red discs in a container, mix them, and then choose one to represent a foul shot. If the color of the disc is green, then the shot is made. If the color of the disc is red, then the shot is missed. This procedure simulates one foul shot. So A says using colored discs, describe how one at bat could be simulated for a baseball player who has a batting average of 300. Note that a batting average of 300 means the player gets a hit on average three times out of every 10 times at bat. Be sure to state clearly what color represents. Okay, so in order to do this, we would put 10 discs in a bat, three of which are green representing a hit, and seven that are red representing a not. And the reason we can do this with only 10 is because 300, 0 0.300, is three tenths hundredths thousandths that's three hundred thousandths so that's three hundred over one thousand okay so if i reduce this those zeros cancel and we end up with three over ten or simply point three so if i have three out of ten there's our three of which are green and seven that are red three plus seven is our total ten so that's where those values came from. Now B says, using, a col using colored discs, describe how one at bat could be simulated for a player who has a batting average of a 273. Note that a batting average of 273 means that on average the player gets 273 hits out of 1,000 at bats. This is .273 or 273 thousandths. So that is 273 over 1,000. Now, on this problem here, we were able to take 300 divided by 1,000 and reduce it down to 3 out of 10 and use our bottom total, 10, for our total number of disks. There's a problem with this one. Okay, so I brought in our calculator, and now I'm going to show you that if I take 273 and divide it by 1,000, I get 0.273. That is our value. Now, this calculator, if I hit math and hit fraction, it will turn a decimal into a fraction. And if it puts it back to the original, it means it cannot be reduced. So my the total number of disks I would need in this case would be 1,000 disks. Okay, so to answer this question, we would have to put 1,000 disks into a bag, 278 green ones for hits and 727 red ones that are non-hits, totaling 1,000. Okay. Example two, using random number tables. Why is using colored disks not practical for the situation described in example 1B? Another way to carry out it, okay, well, we know why. Who would want to sit there and count out that many disks? And what do you have, where do you get those that many and so forth? All right, so another way to carry out a simulation is to use a random number table or a random number generator. In a random number, number table, the digits zero through nine occur equally often in the long run. Pages and pages of random numbers can be found online. For example, here are three lines of random numbers. The space after every five digits, okay, so if you look right here, they're talking about this space right here in between each of these groups of five are going to be ignored, okay? They're only there for ease of reading. Alrighty, so we're going to ignore those. So it says use the random number table to simulate an at bat for 273 hitters in example 1b. So we're going to use three digit numbers to represent an at bat. Three digit numbers 000, 000 through 272 would represent 273. Think of it this way because a lot of students get confused saying, well, why aren't we going up to 273? If 000, 000 is our first number, that's one. And then one is our second number, there's two. 
And if two is our third number, that's three numbers. So when we get all the way to the end, we're going to be one less than the number we're looking for because zero, zero, zero was our starting. So we're going to go from zero, zero, zero to 272 is going to be a hit. And the three digit numbers from 273 to 999 are going to represent a non hit. All right, so non hit could be struck out, walked, hit the ball into play and get thrown out, hit the ball up and get have someone catch it, many, many different ways to be considered not a hit. If you don't get on base, it is not a hit. So we're just going to call it a non-hit because there's many ways to not get it. Okay, so using the random numbers above and starting at the beginning of the first line, first three digits random number is 252, which is between 000 and 272. So that simulated at bat is a hit. So what we're doing is we are circling three digits right here. That's 252. That is less than 272. That is a hit. The next number is 565. So that is not a hit. There's 565, 566. And we're going to continue this way, ignoring the spaces, picking three numbers at a time. And if they are in between, if they're less than 272, then they're not a hit. 520, again, is too large. 572, too large. 597 is more than 290, 272. And then finally we get one here, 0, 0, 5. The next number is 621, that's too big. 268 is less than 272, so 268 is used. And then 390 is too big, 674, too big. 789, too big. 239 is a hit. 656 is a not a hit. 832 is not a hit. 177 is a hit. 338 is not. Be careful here. 557. We have to use the next number on the next line to make the third digit is not a hit. And 663. 592, 290, still a little too big, 888, missed, 647, not a hit, 279, a little too big, we want 272 or less, 414, no, 333, no, 790, no, finally 190 is a hit, and then 594 is a not a hit, 377, not a hit, 510, 740, 518, 723, 807, too big, 058 is a hit. 071 is a hit. 813, no. 144, yes. 669, no. 345, no. 473, no. 077, yes. And 140 is a yes. Okay, so we got the end of the line. The ones that I circled in red are hits. The ones that are circled in green are not hits. Not hits. Okay. So to use the random number table, simulate for at-bats. An at-bat for the 273 hitter, an example would be use the three digit numbers, okay, so on. So we continue on the first line with the random number above and it says, what would the hit, non-hit outcomes be for the next sit at six at-bats? Be sure to state the random number, whether it simulates hits or not hits. So we only needed to do six, but I wanted to explain the process to you fully. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six at-bat stops right here. There are six at-bats, and it was two out of six or one out of three which equals a 0.333 batting average. Okay. Example three. 
a batter typically gets to bat four times night. Consider the two 73 hitters from the previous example. Use the following steps and the random numbers shown above to estimate the player's probability of getting at least three hits, three or four, or four, from four times that bat. So at least three is three or four. Describe what one trial is for this problem. Okay, so a trial consists of four three-digit numbers. For the first trial, 252, 566, 520, 572 constitute one trial. Now B says to describe when a trial is called a success and when it is called a failure. Okay, so a success is getting three or four hits per game. A failure is getting zero, one, or two hits. For the first trial, the hitter got only one hit, so it would be a failure. Now it says to simulate 12 trials. Continue to work as a class or let students work with a partner. So if you're doing this on your own from this video, uh, simulate 12 trials, pause the video, come back and we'll take a look at the results. Okay, so if we're going to continue as a class or whatever, as it said, um, if we're going to continue at this, then I'm going to choose 12 more. Uh, let's start with here. Remember, red's hit. So if I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I only got 3 hits out of 12 in that 12 simulate trial. So 3 out of those 12, which equals 1 out of 4, or 0 0.250. That is simulating 12 trials. Now, D says to use the results of the simulation to estimate the probability that a 273 hitter gets three or four hits and four times that bat. So, hitter gets three or four hits and four times that bat. So, we can pick anywhere in that and start. And if we choose three or four hits, so if I started, say, here and went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, there were four hits in that region, so that would have been a success. But if I started here, I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 to here, then that would only be one hit, and that would be a failure. So it all depends on where you choose to pick your values from. Okay, and go from there. So example four, let's move on to the next problem. Birth month. In a group of more than 12 people, is it likely that at least two people, maybe more, will have the same birth month? And why? Okay, well, there are 12 months in a year. January through December is 12 months. If we have 12 people in a class, then in order for us to not have a duplicate in the month, we would have to have one person for every month and no repeat so everybody would have a different birth month all 12 but if we go with more than 12 people it is not possible to not get two in one month. it is, is it likely that two or at least two people maybe more will have the same birth month yes definitely especially if we have 13 people if we have 13 people there has to be someone sharing a birth month because there's only 12 months in the calendar so now suppose that the same question is asked for a group of only seven people. Are you likely to find some groups of seven people in which there is a match, but other groups in which all seven people have different birth months? And the answer is definitely yes. In the following exercise, you will estimate the probability that at least two people in a group of seven were born in the same month. Okay, so here's exercise one. What might be a good way to generate outcomes for the birth month problem? Using coins, number cubes, cards, spinners, colors, discs, or random numbers. Okay, so here is a super lengthy explanation. Keep in mind that the first thing to do is specify how a birth month for one person is going to be simulated. For example, a do dodecahedron is a 12-sided solid. Each of its sides would represent one month. The following will not work. Coins, only two outcomes. Number cubes, only six outcomes. We need 12. So you have to pick something that will work. The following devices will work. Cards could label 12 cards January through December. Spinners could mark, make a spinner with a 12 equal sectors. 
colored discs would need 12 different colors and then rem remember which color represented which month. 12 discs would work if you could write the name of a month on them. In the random number table, two digit numbers 0, 1 through 1, 2 would work, but 0, 0 through 13, 0, 0, 13 through 99 would have to be discarded, which would be quite laborious and time consuming. Okay. Could be done, but you're going to be discarding a lot of options. Okay, so now it says, how would you simulate one trial of seven birthdays? Okay, again, there are many answers, so I'll just say this one. Suppose students decide to use discs with the same name of the months printed on them, or with the names of the months printed on them. To generate a trial, put the 12 discs in a bag, shake the bag, and choose a disc to represent the first person's birthday. Then replace the disc and do this process six more times. The list of seven birth months generates the trial. Now it says, how is a success determined in your simulation? Okay, a success would be at least one match in seven. That would be a success. Getting two Februarys, two Marches, two Aprils, okay. Not getting any matches would be fair. Now number four says, how is a simulated e estimate determined for the probability that at least two in a group of seven were born in seven? Okay, repeat this N times, a certain number of times. Count the number of successes and divide it by that number n to get the estimated probability of having at least one birth month match in a group of seven. Okay. That is the end of lesson 11. Over your problems.